This episode of Texilla is sponsored by the National Campaign Against Drunk Driving. First it was the kneeling chair, then the yoga ball, now the standing desk. Is reigning supreme in fitness-oriented office workers, at least around here in Northern California. In the quest for better ergonometrics, can standing at your office job mean fewer aches and pains? Here to give us a first-hand account is our resident standing desk enthusiast, D News' very own Anthony Serpico Carboni. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, Anthony. Thank you, sir. That's a lovely shirt. Thank you. This is a lovely <laughs> show. If you haven't seen Nature Hates Me, when you're done watching Tagzilla, go over to testtube.com and watch Nature Hates Me. It's his voice. Yeah. It's nature. Hating you. Laser deer, people. Laser deer. They're coming after you. By the way, congratulations. Engaged. Oh, thank you. Yes. She said yes. yes. Yeah. That's a shame. I, was I did it at a standing desk. At a standing which desk. Which is why I'm so into them. In Iceland. <laughs> next to a volcano. Yeah. Where we're going to talk about standing desks. You, 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 are, you are basically one of several people, myself included, mm -hmm. who have been playing around with standing desks in the office. Fad or a good idea? Uh, it's both. I mean, it is it is a fad, right? You know, just like you said, just like those yoga ball chairs, mm -hmm. just like those kneeling desks, which I never understood. But uh, it is also something that's benefit, uh, beneficial to your health, right? You know, uh, standing up, standing, you will burn twice as many calories right. as you do sitting. When you look at the statistics, half as many as you do running, but that's okay. When you put the human body into mm -hmm. a chair, it's like starting. The, apparently, the word of the day is death watch. It's like starting the death watch. Yeah. Like everything goes wrong the more hours per day you sit in a chair. So anything over six hours actually changes your physiology. You actually, they've done studies. They've looked at cortisol levels, mm -hmm. which is uh, cortisol is linked to stress and obesity. Sure. And uh, in rats, when they eliminated their ability to engage their leg muscles, mm -hmm. after six hours, cortisol, epigenetics, the genes turn on that make you want to overeat and get obese. Yeah. Tiredness happens. So but you know, you, people, you know, I will say that standing desks at the same time, you don't just get a standing desk and stand up, and it's instantly healthy either. Right. That's a that's a popular misconception. Well, it's kind of funny. I mean, I, I was I was using this, and one, I was just like, okay, this is very liberating, and then okay, I'm like hipping into it sometimes, <laughs> or I'm standing on like one foot with my one foot wrapped around it, or my other foot, and then after about four or five hours, I'm feeling like I felt in kitchens when I was cooking a double shift. Yeah, absolutely. You, know, you actually have a padded, like a kitchen style padded flooring below, you know, mat. Yeah, to keep a, yeah, like a standing mat is definitely mm -hmm. recommended uh, because it will stop a lot of that strain on your knees and mm -hmm. on your ankles, but you're also not supposed to stand all day any more than you're supposed to sit all day. Ah. You know, so uh, the first couple weeks that you have a standing desk, you might only stand for 15, 20 minutes at a time and then right. sit for 45 minutes, and that's fine. <laughs> and that's and that's why like a standing desk like this comes in handy where it's adjustable, mm -hmm. you know, because you can go back and forth. We'll talk, this is the, the up desk yes. upright. We'll talk about that in a second. You actually, did you buy or build the, the contraption you compute on? <laughs> so I, I bought it. Uh, it looks like I built it, and it looks like I built it in seventh grade shop class. <laughs> no, but... it looks like you built it from <laughs> spare parts from Ikea kits. Which you can do, and, right. and that's something that you have to look into if you're looking to get into this. Um, I, I have seen a lot of health benefits. Mm -hmm. I've been doing this for a couple months. I feel better at a standing desk, but some people don't. Right. And if you're going to dip your toe in the water, mm -hmm. don't dip your toe in the water with a $1,000 standing desk. Right. You can build something for 20 bucks. There's an Ikea spare part standing desk right. that somebody put together. Ikea where, Hacks, I yeah. believe has a link to it. But but okay, you could just stack some furniture or, mm -hmm. or put a you know put a small bench type table on top of your existing desk. Which a couple desk. people in the office have done here too. And that you know where that helps is if you can find something that is exactly the right height, because there are ergonomics to standing just like there right. are to sitting, right? So you have to find something that's going to keep your monitor up at exactly eye level. You have to find something for your current desk that's gonna keep right. your keyboard so you're not making raptor arms because that's the same problem you have when you're sitting down. Yeah. So why transfer that? <laughs> you know, <laughs> that doesn't seem right. So you can assemble it, but it is nice to have something that you can ergonomically adjust. adjust. So we're standing right behind the inspiration for this segment, the up desk upright. Uh, the first time I've ever wanted to fight over a piece of furniture in any office I've ever worked in. Except for maybe my dad's desk. My dad had a really cool desk. Yeah. But it, this essentially this is up desk power up with a whiteboard top. I'm going to tip this forward. Yeah. You want to actually show the power show the yeah. power part. So essentially it's motorized. Yeah. Um, so and you know some some of these desks have cranks. Some of them have whatever. This one is a motorized one. And it's which got like. dual motors, so it can lift 250 plus pounds. Um, the power up, which does not have the fancy whiteboard surface, would you care to draw on the fancy whiteboard surface? Sure. 
So if you are the sort of person that likes to sketch notes, that's that's kind of the the the, the upright. But essentially, the power desk. Um, you know, it's adjustable. There's yeah. dual motors, three presets that are built in. If you see the little control panel over there, it's quiet, it's fairly solid, it lifts a ton of weight. Yeah. Cons. <laughs> so, yeah, cons. It, and, um, and we should say the infinite adjustability mm -hmm. and the presets are awesome. The presets are amazing. Uh, something that I expected from the presets, though, that I didn't get, mm -hmm. you expect to tap the preset button and back away and have right. the desk, like, lower, you have to hold down the preset button. There's a good safety reason I'm for sure that. there is a great safety reason for it, but it just kind of confused me a little bit. Because the computer can't hear the cat that's sleeping on the chair that's mm -hmm. sitting underneath this as it gets crushed. Got it. But you will hear the cat and stop pressing the button. Just saying. But at least you won't have it's like... like farm accidents. You, you cubicle know? farm accidents. Well, you know, if you're working at a home office or <laughs> if you have people that sleep on your desk. But mm -hmm. it's funny, right? Because the, the nice thing about the uh, an adjustable desk is that you can have all of your gear laid out, your computer, your keyboard, everything set up, and then you can adjust it to... Primarily, you're going to probably be sitting or standing with it. Yeah. Um, or maybe you have two different sets, one for the yoga ball or one for somebody else in the office that uses it. But it's nice to be able to lay out all of your gear it and is. actually and And you do it. get a lot of space, which which is great. One thing that uh, I didn't like, you know, this is, you get a lot of space. Mm -hmm. It's definitely an adjustable table. Mm -hmm. A desk, to me, in my mind, sometimes includes other things. Like drawers. Like drawers, <laughs> like some sort of cable management. Like, okay, well, we, we know that, we know from what we talked about earlier that you want your monitor to be at eye level here. Right. You're going to have to buy a separate thing that's going to take up a lot of that space that's going to get you to eye level. And I noticed that my standard laptop table, table that I use, my, uh, uh, I use the Rain, the Griffin Rain, uh, is not high enough when mm -hmm. I use this because that's what phone books are I for. also don't have a <laughs> keyboard tray here. So right. you don't have multiple levels, which can make it initially hard to mm -hmm. set this up ergonomically. So just buying a stand-up desk is not mm -hmm. automatically going to make the setup ergonometric. Um, it does have sort of some limited cable management, more for the motors and the controller. So yeah. it can use some more built-in uh, yeah. cable management. You can see the motor cables here. I would be tempted to drill a hole through the top to route my cables through Absolutely. rather than routing them over the back. Um, what would you do? Um, the one thing that I notice, and, and people like, you know, okay, I'm a big burly guy, but I'm actually a very delicate touch typist. I'm not. You, you can hear me. From across the freaking room. Uh, but we both noticed that there is some wiggle in this, mm -hmm. right? Especially when you've got it up to a standing desk height. Yeah. Um, now, look, like, I'm a little guy. I did not notice this wiggle as much. Right. You know, but if you, if you stuck a taller person, if you tuck, stuck somebody who was like 6'2 behind this right. desk, one of the nice things about it is it will adjust to a, a height that's tall enough for them, which right. a lot of stuff doesn't. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be really wobbly. And I don't know how you would fix that. I think what, one thing I noticed, the longer I used it, the less I noticed it when I was using it. So that may just be... Like being on a ship or living in a penthouse apartment. Exactly. <laughs> in the sky. But when we say you can adjust it to ridiculously tall people height... I mean, this is like if you have Manute Bowl over <laughs> and he, wants and to he needs check to work his email. on an, exp an Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> or maybe do some mind mapping on the marker top. What did you think about the marker top? Because it's what initially attracted me to this, I think. But... I don't think I used it after the first five minutes. Uh, I wrote like some sketch notes for the review. I know mm -hmm. people, my grandfather used to do sums on restaurant tablecloths. It can go really low. <laughs> Um, so I can see where people, there's people I know who draw for a living who would use something like this, use the scratch notes. But yeah, look, it's, it's a bit of the, the right, the, the whiteboard service, it's a bit of a gimmick. Um, crank ups, their crank version of this started at 640 for the 48 by 30 version, 699 for the 60 by 30 version. The Power Up Series 2, which is essentially what this is, I'm starts just gonna at keep 899 going and $1,000 for, for the six foot wide 30 inch deep version. It's a nice desk, man. It is a nice desk. And you know, one of the things, you know, when you're looking at spending, uh, you know, 900 bucks on a desk, right. um, think about trying the crank version. Think <laughs> about trying a version that maybe, like mine, you can only adjust during the setup phase. Right. Um, and see if that works for you. Standing desks. He's a convert. I'm becoming one. Investigate it before you spend all the cash. Up desk. We like it quite a bit. Congratulations a on the engagement. Hey, thanks, man. Welcome back from Iceland. Thank you. Let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors. Starting August 14th to September 2nd, law enforcement agencies across the country are joining forces to crack down on impaired drivers during the Drive Sober or Get Pulled Over campaign. It's there to save lives. Driving while impaired is illegal, stupid, and selfish. 
In driving crashes involving alcohol, there was an average of one fatality every 51 minutes. Over the 2010 Labor Day weekend, 147 people were killed in crashes involving drivers or motorcycle riders with blood alcohol levels of 0.08 or higher. But even if you don't end up hurting yourself and others because of irresponsible intoxication while driving, you can still face jail time, loss of your driver's license, and wallet-busting expenses like attorney fees, higher insurance rate, court costs, lost time at work, and the potential loss of your job. Please find a designated driver, call a taxi, or just stay put if you've been drinking. Law enforcement is cracking down now throughout the year. And if you're caught driving while impaired, you will be arrested. No warnings, no excuses. Because when you drink and drive, you're not only putting yourself at risk, but everyone else on the road too. Drive sober.